Okay, so today I want to uh, show you a little trick because uh, I occasionally get questions and honestly, when I first started working on radios, it was something I really wasn't sure about. And it was a problem I used to run into, you know, years ago. Um, and I thought I'd share this information with you um, in a cheap way to get around it. Cheap thanks to China. <laughs> um, the problem is occasionally you'll be doing... Uh, now, honestly, in this radio, the signal levels are fine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have that problem in this one. They are kind of low, and actually, with the one frequency counter, I'll show. Uh, but the problem is, you're trying to do a transceiver alignment. Um, the first, the first thing you do in your alignment is the synthesizer circuit. So you're going to be calibrating basically all of the crystals and the oscillator circuits in the radio. You need to calibrate those frequencies so they're accurate. The problem is. Some radios, some of those circuits, the signal's too small, and your frequency counter won't pick it up. <laughs> you'll, hook, you'll hook up your probe, uh, and most people use what I'm showing right here, which is perfectly fine. You use something like an oscilloscope probe. They're very handy. Um, ideally, you should have this in the 10 times, you know, if you're, you know, one that's either permanently 10 times, one that you know, has a fixed 10 time value. Or if it's if you're using one that came with a scope, a lot of times it'll be like this one. It's switchable between one times and ten times. You want to put it in ten times. That adds uh, adds attenuation and that'll help to prevent loading down your oscillator circuits, which inevitably will shift. In, depending where the test points are, it may actually shift your frequency one direction or the other. But uh, like I say, a lot of times the problem you'll have is you'll hook up a scope probe, have it in ten times position. You'll hook it up to your frequency counter. And it doesn't display anything. It'll show just that. Zero, 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 or whatever your shows. Or it'll be bouncing around. It's not a steady frequency. It will not. It's just the signal's not big enough for your frequency counter to lock on to it. Um, now, you know, if you've got something like a spectrum analyzer, no biggie, that thing measures down into you know, ungodly small signal levels. But a lot of people aren't going to have something like that. So what can you do? Well, some people would say, well, use an oscilloscope. Eh, that's about all I can say. Eh, good luck with that. <laughs> Unless you have a really, really expensive scope. A lot more expensive than that scope. A lot more expensive. Add another, shoot, two zeros to the end of it, the price. Uh, yeah, the frequency counters that are built in, because that has a frequency, uh, where the heck is it, up the top right there, there's a little frequency display. That thing's only accurate to, like, what is it, 100 or maybe 10 hertz or something like that. And they're really not that super... They're great for just hooking up to a circuit. Ah, okay, there's a 10 megahertz something signal. You know, it's it, a general reference, but you don't want to use that for doing alignments. You want to use a frequency counter. Like I said, you can use a spectrum analyzer. That's perfectly fine. Most people don't have that. But how do we get our signal bigger so we can see it? Now, if you have something like that, that's a laboratory amplifier. It's a wide band or a broad band lab amplifier. Um, it has a fairly flat frequency response over a very large range. And it will take a very tiny signal and make it big, so something like the frequency counter can lock onto it. You can use it for other things, too, because actually that one will do up to 5 watts. So, I mean, shoot, you can transmit with that thing. But that's really, really expensive. Even used, those frequently sell in the thousand plus dollar range. I think that one usually sells for like 1500 to 2000 used, usually. Uh, new, they're like, what, 10,000, 15,000 or more. And that's, like I say, that's only a 5-watt amplifier. So, what can you do to not have to buy something really expensive like that? Well, you don't need a lab amplifier, because that thing puts out, like I say, it's a 5-watt amplifier. You don't need that much power. You just need a little bit. So, if you only need a little bit, get a little amplifier. So, that's exactly what we have here. Let me just disconnect it. It's actually hooked up in, in the radio right now. Disconnect the power, all the cables here. So I actually, this wasn't a freebie, I actually bought it, but I wanted to show it. So I got this on eBay, and actually what you get on, if you buy it on eBay, does not come with the SMA to BNC adapters. So that's what you're going to get, minus the two wires that are soldered to the board right there. Uh, it's just a very simple little broadband amplifier. Uh, its rated specs are from point. 
1 megahertz or 100,000 hertz to 2,000 megahertz or 2 gigahertz. Uh, it has 30 dB gain with a maximum output of plus 10 dBm. So perfectly fine for what we want to do. We want to take a fairly small signal to start with. Uh, you know, it may be down around like minus 5 dBm or something. Um, you know, or down in the millivolt range, because that's usually where your oscillator circuit frequent or signal levels or signal levels are going to be. They're going to be below a hundred uh, millivolts, let's say, and that's the problem. Once you get down around that fifty millivolt mark, depending on your frequency counter, you need to check the input sensitivity of it. You very well may not your frequency counter may not be able to lock on to a signal as small as the radio's oscillator circuits might be putting out. So that's where a little critter like this comes in handy. Uh, now I'm not going to direct you to any single person's listing because there's a gazillion of these things on eBay. Just type in something like broadband or wideband RF amplifier. You're going to see these little things. If it's a little tiny green board with a little SMA connector on the end, on each end, you can see there's just a couple components on there. There's a bunch of, uh, what, one, two, three, four, five, five ceramics, five ceramic capacitors, a resistor, and the little amplifier, I'm assuming that's probably, actually I have to take a look at it. Is that a, no, that's all ground plane. So yeah, it's just a transistor. I wanted to see if it was a MOSFET. Uh, no, it's just a transistor. But yes, that's it right there. That's the amplifier, that little tiny black circle, <laughs> that little dot. That's your amplifier transistor. You know something? This little guy works fantastic. It gets the job done. Uh, now the only thing, if you work on CB radios, you probably don't, deal with SMA connectors a lot, which is what this has on it. So, uh, now these are Pomona. They're actually very expensive. You don't need to get Pomona brand. Again, just go to eBay and type in SMA connect, you know, SMA to BNC adapter. Uh, get yourself to SMA to BNC adapters, because most people that work on CBs, everything they have is going to be, you know, the test equipment's probably going to be either end connectors, um, or, you know, frequency counters and whatnot, everything's going to be BNC connectors, just like the end of your scope probes. They're going to be BNC connectors. Uh, now, you can actually vary the gain on this little board, so if you get one of these, you can even use this as an amplifier for a receiver. So if you have, like, a shortwave receiver, well, it doesn't have to be a shortwave, actually, because, remember, this covers from 0.1 megahertz to 2 gigahertz, so 100,000 hertz to 2 gigahertz range. You can just basically stick this in line with your antenna, hook up uh, between 6 to 12 volts to this thing, and you've got an amplifier, a preamp for your receiver. So, you know, lots of handy little uses you could use this thing for. Uh, like I say, it's small signal levels we're dealing with here, so don't expect massive amounts of power out of the end. The biggest, the biggest thing that's going to come out of the end of this thing is about plus 10 dBm. Um, but for this, for this purpose, it's great, and I want to show that. So, let's just say we take... So we've got this radio here. I just picked the test point in here. Got a scope probe hooked up to it. Here's the other end of it. So if we go over and hook it up to the spectrum analyzer. We can see there's our signal. Okay. And if we hook it up to an oscilloscope. Again, we can see there's our signal. And I think, uh, how big was that? Oh, yeah, it should be plenty big enough for, the, for this frequency counter to lock on to. Oh, yeah. So you can see it's reading just fine. But let's say, aha, see the light stop flashing, and it's no longer changing here. In this frequency counter, when that little light is flashing, that means it's, it's actually reading the signal. You see, actually, the sensitivity, you can see, I just turn it a little bit, it starts to jump around. That's the problem you run into frequently. So actually, this counter is having, starting to have troubles locking onto it. It's right, I've got the sensitivity turned up the whole way. If I turn it up the whole way, no, nah, it's, it's bouncing around. So honestly, it's having a hard time locking onto that signal. So actually, this is the perfect example. But we even turn the sensitivity down more. We'll turn it down to halfway. The lights stopped. The counter, it's not doing anything anymore. It's just that's the last thing that it could read. So what we're going to do is, is just take our little amplifier module here. We're going to hook to the input. 
hook up our scope probe. I got a BNC cable here. We're going to hook up to the other end. Oop, did I knock the scope? Nope. I thought I knocked the scope probe off in the radio. Hook up my ground. So I have this hooked up to a power supply over there. And where is the positive? There it is. It's putting out actually just 10.8 volts at the moment. So actually, that power supply right there is putting out 10.8 volts at, and it's a little. This amplifier is using a whole whopping 0 .04 amps, <laughs> so 40 milliamps. Yeah, it doesn't use a lot of power. And we'll take the other end of this BNC cable, and we'll hook it up to the frequency counter. Now you can see I still have the sensitivity set at halfway, and it's locked on. That's what the little guy does. <laughs> it's just a 30 dB amplifier, so it has increased the signal going into this frequency counter by 30 dB. You can see I'm turning down, turning down. Okay, just unlocked there. See, I'm like at a less than a quarter turn on the gain here, or the sensitivity adjustment. Where before, even when it was at full clockwise rotation, it was not locking. The last couple digits were just continuously bouncing around because it was having trouble locking onto it. So, you know, there's a perfect example. Again, we can go over to the spectrum analyzer. Hook it up to the spectrum analyzer. So you can see how big the signal is there. And then if we disconnect the BNC cable take this connector off, so we're just going to hook the scope probe back up straight to the spectrum analyzer. You can see how small the signal is there. It's 30 dB smaller. So, if you have problems uh, with your frequency counter, it's not your frequency counter. I mean, it is your frequency counter. It is and it isn't. You're, the problem is you're trying to use an instrument like that out of its range. If you look at the owner's manual, it will tell you minimum input sensitivity. Well, if the, if the signal that you're trying to pick up, you have to remember, you're usually going to be using something like a scope probe in the 10 times position because you want that additional input impedance so you don't load down the circuit in the radio, which, in depending where you hook it up, could shift your frequency, for starters, or it could just stop an oscillator from oscillating altogether. It'll just... It'll stop oscillating. So, you know, you you want a scope probe in the 10 time position, but you just, you, once you flip into the 10 times position, then your counter won't lock on. You flip it into the times one position, yeah, your counter will lock onto it, but now your calibration isn't correct because you've applied so much load to that oscillator circuit, it's actually shifted to frequency one direction or the other. So, that's all you need to do. Keep your scope probe in 10 times. Spend uh, this little board. I know I got this one from a supplier in the United States. So this shipped from, I think it was California. It was less than $10. It was $10 and whatever odd cents. Um, you know, I'm sure you can get these things. Cause there's buku of these things for sale on eBay. Um, if you get them direct from China, you can probably get them even cheaper. But yeah, so for under $10... For the amplifier module, again, go to eBay. You can get uh, cheap versions of these. Like I said, you don't have to have the high-end Pomona ones, but just get yourself some SMA to BNC adapters. Um, and the only other thing you're really going to need, which you probably all already have if you do repairs on radios, is you know at least a BNC cable to then hook up from the output of this over to your frequency counter. But uh, So there's kind of a review of what these are. Um, you know, like I say, eBay, and there's other places, other websites you can get these things online, but, uh, and how to actually use it, and what it does for you. Like I say, it's, the main thing is, you, you end up, you're, if you've ever run into that, I know I used to, all the time. You're trying to measure a signal, ah, oh, it's just too small, what do I do? And you're not sure if something like, you know, you see these things online, and you go, man, w will that work for what I want, you know, ah, and you read the spec sheet and it says, ah, oh, it's 50 ohm input impedance. Well, don't forget, a lot of times, depending on what you're using, some frequency counters, now that one has 1 mega ohm input impedance. Some may have 50 ohm input impedance. Some of them, now that one doesn't, but I've got other frequency counters that have selectable. So they'll have multiple inputs, 
one input will be 50 ohms and, in, and another input will be 1 meg or it'll be selectable with a push button. Um, but yeah, this little thing works fine even if the impedance of this board is mismatched to the amp, to like that counter, it's actually a mismatch because this is 50, 50 ohm output imp input and output impedance on this. That has a 1 mega ohm input impedance. That doesn't really matter. That will affect Put the camera back down here. That will affect the signal amplitude. You know, it, it may throw off. You're not going to be able to take accurate measurements. So, you know, if you put a signal in here, the signal coming out, if you don't have the exact right input and output impedance, yes, that'll throw your amplitude off, but it's not going to change your frequency. We could honestly care less about the accuracy of amplitude. The only thing we care about in this instance is the accuracy of the frequency, and it's not going to change that. Like I say, as long as you keep the input impedance of the circuit you're hooking up to by using a scope probe in the 10 times position, you don't have to worry about loading the circuit down. And then you don't really have to worry about matching this to a 50 ohm. Now, if you have a, a frequency counter that has a 50 ohm input on it, that's perfectly fine. Use that because then you'll have the correct setup. Um, actually, that counter right there has... Uh, 50 ohm and 1 meg ohm input impedance. It has those two jacks on the front there. The one that has the cap on it is actually a 50 ohm input impedance, and then the other one is a 1 meg ohm input impedance. But uh, actually, I got that backwards. One of the yellow caps, 1 meg, the other one's 50 ohm. But uh, yeah, so go to eBay, pick yourself up one or two of these these cheap little critters. Like I say, for the price, shoot, get a second one to have one for a spare. Uh, they're under ten dollars, and uh, maybe that'll <laughs> help help get you out of a bind someday when you just can't you you're trying to do an alignment and you can't get your counter to lock on there's there's a cheap solution to your problem